Hey, Apple Friday. This week, we got a major update for Windows. All the Android brands are copying Liquid Glass, and I think nothing is wrong about wireless charging. All the timestamps are below as usual, and welcome to the Friday Checkout. This video was sponsored by Hanson Shaving. Okay, for my first story of the week, Microsoft announced a massive set of new changes for Windows that to me sound like kind of a Windows 12 in disguise. First, you can now stream your screen to Copilot Vision and talk to it about what you're looking at to find products on screen and so on. Kind of like circle to search on Android, but something that happens continuously. Second, Copilot action allows the system to actually control your PC. The example they showed is you giving it access to a folder on your PC that contains a bunch of images and telling it to fix the orientation of the photos and also to remove the duplicates. The system then starts the process of actually doing what you asked it to do and shows you a step by step of where it actually is in the process. And supposedly you can jump in and take control at any point. If that actually works and also works with other random file management things like, I don't know, merging PDFs, for example, then it might be the first Copilot feature that I actually find useful. Anyway, there's also a new Ask Copilot bar in the taskbar, which acts as a kind of hub to launch actions from in case you haven't had enough Copilot buttons on your PC yet. And that looks like something that I'd probably turn off. Plus, there are now also Copilot connectors on Windows, which allow you to connect external apps like OneDrive and even Google accounts so that Copilot can perform actions on data stored across across those as well, though I doubt that there'll be many integrations for this for now. Microsoft seems to want to market all of this as a computer that you can talk to and which can talk back, which I find a bit strange. I think we've been disappointed by talking to our computers often enough to not actually want this, plus also most people use their PCs in an office with people around them where you wouldn't want them to talk, so yeah, I, I'm not so sure about the talking part, but the rest looks perhaps interesting if they actually deliver and it works well. Copilot Vision is apparently available worldwide now based on your Windows version, and in case you're wondering, it is only supposed to turn on manually if you trigger it, and the rest of the features are supposed to come to insiders first. Okay, for my second story of the week, the most predictable yet disappointing thing happened with mobile operating systems. After Apple introduced their new design language called Liquid Glass on iOS 26, guess what? Seemingly every Android brand other than the Pixel line announced this week that they're copying it. Honor, Oppo, Vivo, and OnePlus all announced their new Android 16 skins, and Samsung kind of half announced the One UI 8.5 beta, and all of them are very obviously uh, inspired by Apple's new design. I think Honor's implementation looks the most obvious. You get the lock screens with the weirdly tall frosted glass clocks that are partially obstructed by the backgrounds. You get the transparent widgets with the frosted glass look. You get the reflections and the liquid animations, the shimmer along the edges of the glass panels, basically the whole thing. I'd say Oppo, Vivo, and OnePlus are a little bit more toned down, but the same elements are present too. And the overall aesthetic is extremely obviously leaning towards Apple's new design. Frosted glass, liquid bubbles, dynamic islands, you have all of it, and Vivo even straight up copied the subpar notification system from iOS, despite that clearly being inferior to what we already have on Android. I can kind of accept the visual changes, but I've never met a single person who thought that iOS notifications worked better than Android ones, so why the hell would we copy those too? It just... Ugh. Now for Samsung, I've linked to a walkthrough from Sam Mobile in the description that gives you a comparison. And while they have been the least bad about the copying, you can still see some clear inspiration, like how these menus and search bars all have moved to little floating bubbles now, similar to how they are on iOS. But hey, if you're watching this on YouTube in a web browser, you'll also see that their new player has loads of liquid glass-like elements too, which suggests that Google is moving into this direction too. Of course, frosted glass and pill-shaped buttons have existed before Apple adopted them, and platforms like Windows 11, for example, have kind of had this aesthetic for many years now. But yeah, this obvious move from so many brands at the same time is pretty clearly inspired by primarily Apple. All right, and for my third story of the week, I think nothing has released some perhaps unintentionally misleading information. The company likes to upload these videos to YouTube where they playfully put together hypothetical devices to give people an idea of the cost of various things, which I generally find really quite refreshingly transparent. Anyway, when they talked about the Qi 2 magnetic charging the last time, they essentially claimed the following. Now onto the main question, why don't more phones have this? The sad reality is it's down to legal red tape, industry politics, and a whole load of bull even though Qi 2 is a wireless standard that anyone can use, the magnet configurations that optimally support Apple-compatible wireless chargers are patented and restricted. The only way to get around this is to develop your own magnetic wireless charger to work with your device. But because the magnets in your device are not the exact same configuration as Apple's MagSafe, there's a good chance that the coils may not be perfectly aligned and you won't get the optimized charge speed and you'll generate more heat. 
So it seems a lot of companies have probably weighed up the pros and cons of doing this, but the reality is, it's just not worth it for them, especially when wired charging solutions are so much faster. When we asked our team how much it would cost roughly to develop our own wireless charging system, they estimated it would be about $10 million. Now, I recently made a video about the Qi2, and for that, I talked to a bunch of experts from various companies who make wireless chargers, and also HMD, the first Android company who made a phone with Qi2 already built in, including the magnets, but also the wireless power consortium, whose standard Qi2 actually is. I never heard anything like that from any of them before, and so I was surprised, and I asked them, and here's what I heard. If Nothing was a wireless power consortium member, they would have access to the specs and favorable licensing terms under RAND. Knowing that Google, HMD, Samsung, plus others soon, are already using magnets in phones or covers suggests that Nothing may not understand the situation. That was from the Wireless Power Consortium directly. Again, they own the standard, and this seems pretty definitive. I think they're saying that essentially nothing is wrong here. Now, to be clear, there might be some miscommunication, plus I don't think nothing is lying on purpose. The videos are just for fun, and I guess the experts that they ask from their team don't have like a super long time frame to look into everything in detail for just a short video, but yeah. I'm just saying that as far as I understand, the magnetic alignment is actually part of the standard, and so I really don't think that every brand that wants to have that in a device needs to pay $10 million to custom develop everything from scratch again. Okay, moving on to a release monitor, Apple has announced a bunch of new devices this week which are all centered around their brand new M5 chip. There's no M5 Max or Ultra or anything else just yet, just a baseline chip for now, and while the CPU only got a little bit faster, the GPU is actually up by a pretty respectable 45%. This chip goes into an updated Vision Pro, which also got a more comfortable looking dual knit band, plus a bump in refresh rate up from 90 to 120 Hz, but somehow still costs 3,500 bucks. Meanwhile, the 14 inch MacBook Pro and iPad Pro both got the new chip as well, along with faster SSDs, and the iPad also got Apple's new wireless chips called the C1X and the N1 for better connectivity. Oh, and fun fact, the MacBook in Europe now comes without a charger in the box, and if you want one, you have to pay 65 or 85 euros extra, depending on how fast you want it to charge. Now, the whole internet seems extremely upset about this, and they're all either blaming the greedy Apple or the silly EU regulations or whatever for taking their precious charger away, but I actually looked at the prices. The MacBook Pro, as far as I can tell, actually went down 100 euros in price in Europe, so... I think that's a net positive. If you don't want the charger, you can just keep a cheaper laptop. And even if you do get a charger, it is still cheaper than it was last year. I think this is fine. And also fine is that Razer released a whole slew of their products using new white transparent plastic to catch all of you nostalgia riding freaks who yearn for the days of your old Game Boy advances. You know exactly who you are. As usual, links to all the products that I could find are in the description. And now let's move on to the brief. A Korean outlet called Newspim claims that Samsung is cancelling the S26 Edge after its predecessor has seen significantly lower than expected sales. Sam Mobile then quickly confirmed this with their own source too, so the report seems real. Next, Samsung also released a teaser for their Vision Pro competitor called Project Muhan, which should have a launch event on the 21st of October. Let's see what they have. And meanwhile, also this week, Austria's military apparently switches from Microsoft Office to LibreOffice. They're moving 16,000 computers over as more and more government agencies are increasingly nervous about sovereignty. And talking of sovereignty, the Dutch government has also taken control of the chipmaker Nexperia, which was Dutch before and got sold to Chinese owners. They claim that they have found serious governance shortcomings after the sale and they cite national security concerns since. And as you might imagine, the Chinese owners are seriously unhappy. Then, moving on to horny news, Sam Altman said that ChatGPT will soon sext with verified adults after the company starts rolling out age verification soon. He says the company has totally figured out how to make the AI not become problematic and, for example, manipulate people with mental health issues, so everything's gonna be completely fine, don't worry about it. <laughs> and then, in things to totally not worry about, Google announced their new version of their video AI called VO 3.1. Not only do they claim that the videos generated with this are better, but also that you can give more specific instructions like giving VO a beginning and an end frame and then to tell the model to just fill in the rest, while the whole thing also comes with audio generation, both for background sounds and voices. And meanwhile, also this week, I also noticed two new ads from major companies that were very obviously either completely or majority AI generated. First was Honor, who teased an upcoming phone which comes with a motorized robotic gimbal, kind of like what you see on a DJI Osmo camera, but built in your phone. And while the phone itself is cool, I guess, and seems to have been done with a traditional 3D render, everything else 
else in the clip was very obviously AI generated, including the fake photo that is supposed to look like it was taken on the phone, and also the store itself that is supposed to be an honor store. Why would they do that? But then right after Samsung also released a completely nonsensical ad with basically no storyline at all that appears to be, I think, 100% AI generated and also just looks like absolute crap. The faces are off, everything looks and sounds terrible. Why are aliens so ugly? Not all aliens are ugly. There are all the moral implications and in general, I just don't understand how large companies can afford to do something like this. It's really bad. I think tech companies are constantly trying to sell you on the idea that the newer thing is automatically better when in reality, sometimes the opposite is true. Just a well shot or well rendered video would have been so much better. And believe it or not, it's the same story with the razors. The modern ones became over bloated monstrosities with three, four or five blades of vibrating moisturizing strips and whatnot. But as it turns out, you can actually get a better shave from a good old simple safety razor than all of those. Hansen realized that the way to make that happen is to just make things way more precise than usual, which makes all the difference. Precision is achieved by machining the aluminum parts with super tight tolerances so that the blade only extends by 0.0013 inches past the shave plane according to them. That is less than the thickness of a human hair and the less it extends, the less chatter there is. Less chatter means more stability and this is the main way to get a clean shave and to avoid irritation and razor burn. The robust construction also keeps the blade at exactly the right angle and supports it there uniformly so it's always perfectly parallel. Hansen says that their aerospace machine shop in Canada has also made parts for the Mars rover and the International Space Station, so they really know how to do a precise job. I've been shaving with mine for a few months now and especially with the shaving cream that they sent me, it's been quite an experience. Just a few quick swipes with very minimal pressure and I have a perfectly clean shave. There's of course much less waste than with cartridges, which is good for the environment. And while the handle itself is of course a bit of an investment, the blades themselves only cost about 10 cents each instead of the $2 or so that you'd pay for a cartridge. This means that over time you save a ton of money and Hansen doesn't even have a subscription because you just won't need one. And to go further, Hansen will even give their buyers their first 100 blades for free if they use my link hansenshaving.com tfc. To get the gift, you need to put both the blades and the razor into your cart. So go to hansenshaving.com tfc and enter the code tfc for 100 blades for free. Put both of those bad boys into your cart. Happy shaving and I'll see you next Friday.